Hey guys, hello gorgeous. Taking a look at a Marvel Select figure today, it is Daredevil, Matt Murdock, from the Netflix series. And this figure is available at Big Bad Toy Store. And it is currently on sale there too, as of making of this video. I've got a few Marvel Select figures. Most of them are uh, just on their packaging. I haven't opened them up yet. But the ones that are based on live action movies or, or TV shows, uh, I do open those up. So I'll have some comparisons later on of this guy with the ones that I've opened up. But uh, this is Matt Murdock from the Netflix series. And as you can see, he's got a little bit of a club foot, a little bent foot. So uh, I was planning on opening him up anyways. So that doesn't really bother me. But for people who like to keep their figures mint on card for display that is probably very annoying when a head is turned the wrong way or a body part is turned the wrong way but just a quick look at the packaging here uh, great pose here uh, showing off the articulation maybe even more posability than the hot toys version uh, i love netflix daredevil i would have loved to have gotten that hot toys version but that is not in my budget so with the uh, Marvel Select figures. It's really nice to be able to get those characters in a smaller scale, but almost as much detail. So that is the packaging and let's open this guy up. And one of the biggest elements of this figure is the base stand that he comes with. This is a Pretty substantial piece here and it is attached with some twist ties which you just have to undo or you can just do that. So this base right here, it's pretty obvious that this is the front because there's nothing on the back here. It has pegs that will just fit into the peg holes here. And you just push that in there. Connects, you hear a nice satisfying snap and it's in there nice and secure. So now you have a place for your Daredevil figure when he is freed from the packaging to stand. And we pull Mr. Murdoch out of the packaging. Doesn't look like there's anything else in there. Sometimes there's a head or other parts in there. And we've got this piece right here, which looks like a stand, uh, like a, a stand to allow him to fly through the air type of pose. And we cut that. And we cut that. And a couple of accessories too. The great thing with the Marvel Select figures is that you usually will get alternate hands. So they can't do articulated fingers in this small a scale for what they charge, but uh, you do get alternate swappable hands. Sometimes you get an extra head. We've got some uh, batons here, Murdox batons, which these actually fit together. And the figure himself, which again, these are really handy to have uh, if you have a lot of these tie wraps to go through. Just snippity snip. I really like to make sure the figure is nice and secure in these packages. go and he also comes with this stand right here um, one thing I wanted to do clearly for the camera though because I bet this is gonna be very satisfying for some collectors this crooked foot there you go <laughs> finally fixed facing the proper direction so let's take a look at the figure uh, the sculpt is fantastic the light really 
catches it nicely, especially if you're lighting him from overhead. I'm going to kill one of my lights here. To show you what he's supposed to look like, he's a, he's a dark figure. He's always shrouded in darkness on the show. And this is really where he's in his element. If you display him in a, a dark corner of your room, on your shelf, um, on, a, on a shelf or dresser or something like that, um, that's where he really uh, looks e eerie. Like the the head sculpt is fantastic. Look at this. This is Charlie Cox from the uh, series, and it is amazing the amount of detail that they, they can get in this scale. Um, I'm actually really impressed. It's one of those things again where. It looks pretty good in the packaging. Sometimes when you open it, you go, oh no, why did I do that? And sometimes when you open it, you go, wow, uh, this thing actually looks a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, in terms of articulation, he's got some upper chest articulation right here. It's, it's not really an ab crunch. Usually this part would be lower. It's like a chest crunch, which is nice. He's also got a swivel waist. Uh, arm is on sort of a ball joint. I mean, he's got up and down, left and right. It's not, it's not really a ball joint. And elbow articulation, up and down. I'm gonna turn on one of my other lights again to get a better look at this, as well as uh, full rotation of the elbow. And the wrist has both rotation and also this uh, this little bit of a swivel too so that's cool you can have him just uh, winding up for a punch or he just threw a punch or he's well this looks more like he's looking at what time it is it's uh, it's butt kicking time and he's also got these hands which you can Let's see, sometimes uh, these figures can be very difficult to swap parts with and they end up getting damaged. Uh, well, that was super easy because you can see the, um, the peg isn't, it doesn't have huge ridges on it. Sometimes if there's too much of a ridge there or uh, like a mushroom on the end of it, it can break. And that I've had that happen a few times with my modern GI Joes. Uh, so that's nice that that just pops right out and you can take one of the replacement hands and Just stick that right in so it's not so secure and stiff that you'll damage it when you pull it out But it does hold pretty well so you take his baton and you can just Place it Let's see how poseable these fingers are now. These are pretty stiff these fingers you might want to heat them up a little bit to avoid uh, breaking or even chipping the paint off of this guy. And we can swap the other hand, pop in the second hand, nice and secure again, and maybe we'll put it in this one. So, Here he is with his batons and to finish his articulation, uh, the head is on a ball joint so it moves left and right, up and down. Oh, he's got, look at the articulation he's got there. That's awesome. That is one of the iconic poses of Daredevil um, where he is, things are going flying here, where he is sort of kneeling and looking straight up, uh, especially for a blind character. It's just one of his trademark looks where he's really intently listening. So for uh, Matt Murdock with all of his little trademark head tilts and he can't really do a, a tilt to the side, but that is a lot more range than most figures this size have. So I like that. That's really awesome. Uh, and by the same token, he, he can really look straight down. Look at that. That's especially cool if he is perched somewhere. If you have him perched on a shelf, you can have him be 
maybe not that much. I mean, that looks like he's in trouble and he's being scolded or something, but uh, I'm really impressed with the head articulation. And then as far as the rest of the articulation goes, he's got a leg articulation that goes forward and quite a bit back and out too. So this is kind of a different looking joint from what we're used to, but look at that. It, it actually allows him to go forward and out. Give one of those Chuck Norris kicks. That's really cool. Knee is on a double joint. So you can look at that. That is awesome. That's fantastic. Usually you can't get much more than that in an action figure, but this double jointed knee lets that leg really collapse a lot. And then for the foot articulation, the ankle can go left and right. And then there's also the foot has quite a bit of bend to it too. That's impressive. Look at that. It's almost like Spider-Man level of articulation and no side to side there. Uh, so just standing him up on his own, you can get quite a bit of great articulation with him. Uh, I guess the last thing I wanted to mention before I get to the posing is he's got a little hoster right here. So you can pop his batons in there. It does feel like kind of a tight fit. Quite a tight fit. There is a hole on the other side, so I guess you can push them all the way through. That's feeling really tight though. Um, I'm not going to bother with that because that's more effort than it's worth for me. I do want to pose him with these batons in his hands though, so we'll put one in each hand. And since the peg on this one is on this end to connect, I uh, prefer to just stick it that way. And now to try a few poses, you can have him just be stoic, standing there, uh, ready to fight somebody. That's really, really, I'm really impressed with this sculpt. It looks so much better out of the package. Look at that. That's fantastic. And for a few action poses, if he is beating somebody up, maybe he's smashing them with the batons. Let's see how, uh, how well he does at a wider legged stance. Feels pretty sturdy. There are holes in here in the stand. I don't see any pegs included though uh, with this thing. I think they are uh, for this, um, for this arm, which I'll show you in a bit, uh, in order to peg into there and hold them on. But if you have pegs from other figures, uh, you would probably be able to just stick one in the base there and then one in the foot to keep them secure. But he's actually, he's not bad just on his own without any pegs. Looking quite nice there. Nice little just uh, quick action pose. Or you can have him, let's see here, if you put it in this way, spin it around. You can put him in a pose where he is pulling the, uh, the baton apart. Lots of articulation here, and I dare say more than the uh, Hot Toys figure, the 12 inch figure, which is several times more expensive than this one. So if you're on a budget and maybe you don't have as much space for a Hot Toys figure, um, this is a fantastic alternative. It's not just a consolation uh, figure, but um, seeing the videos and, re and the reviews of the uh, Hot Toys Daredevil, and then seeing this in hand, in person, um, I gotta say I'm actually more impressed with this guy than the uh, Hot Toys Daredevil. Really nice stuff. So now, let's take a look at the flight stand, or the jumping stand. 
Now it comes with this stand right here that you can connect it with. It just pops in the hole right there. And so if you don't want to use this big bulky stand, you can just use this thing. We'll set this aside for now. And the way this works is, um, I guess you can attach either end to the stand, but it would probably work better if you used, um, let's see here, that moves like that. It would probably work better if you, if you went this way, since there is like an added little piece right here. And then the big question, this feels pretty loose. So the question is, is this gonna hold him? So he's got a hole in his back here that just fits in there. That fits nice and secure. This holds nice and secure, but <laughs> it's it's not it's not sturdy enough to hold them. So you might be able to tighten this screw. I'm actually going to go and grab a screwdriver and see if I can tighten this uh, to see if it'll hold them better. So now that I have my screwdriver, I'm going to see if this is just a case of a loose screw. It doesn't feel like it it feels like it's already as tight as as you can get it so this particular stand that they've included not not really a flight stand it'd be nice if you could have him flying through the air taking advantage of this knee joint that bends so much give him one of those there's so much posability here. He would be fantastic for this type of pose. Flying through the air. But the flight stand won't allow it. All this is really good for is to not even not even do that. I mean you, you stick it in his back to keep them standing um, and then it's just big and bulky like what's what's the point so unfortunately the flight stand uh, is not that effective uh, you might be able to find other stands maybe rig something using one of these pieces to stick in his back but uh, that's a shame because it would be really cool to have him flying through the air like that now since I'm not a fan of this stand it just looks like some random like it doesn't have any significance to the character uh, i'm actually going to be putting this guy on this stand which came with one of the old spider-man uh, classics figures so there is a peg hole or a peg right there and let's see if this fits it uh it's kind of a tight squeeze sort of works, I don't know. Um, but I think this stand actually works for him a lot better. Now, this figure might be a little bit big for this particular stand, but I think since this stand has a little spot here where you can hang it onto a wall, and, and this one does not, uh, I like the idea of sticking this uh, gothic church window looking thing just anywhere on my wall where I have a free space and having a daredevil standing on it like that or uh, another common pose of Matt Murdock is uh, a kneeling pose which is very easy to do with all of this range he's got. Well, he might not be able, no, he doesn't, he doesn't quite have enough range to do like a full kneel. Unfortunately, I thought maybe he'd be able to do that. There's probably not enough room on the ledge either. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a tight squeeze there. So if you do want to use that original Spider-Man Classics, gothic window for Matty. 
then you're going to have to uh, have, him, have him standing, but I think that is a really beautiful looking stand for this particular figure. And I'll kill the light again, just to give you a look at what that would look like. That looks fantastic. Also wanted to mention the paint job on this is very subtle. I like the subdued uh, reds used on the suit, but then the reds on the eyes are very bright. Bright red, which they are on the TV show as well. So that makes that part of the costume really pop. And it goes again, I've mentioned unity and color before with the batons. The batons are also the, uh, the same bright red as in the eyes as well. And for some size comparisons, I've got the original Daredevil from Spider-Man Classics. So he's just a little bit taller than that original comic Matt Murdock. And this Netflix suit is so much cooler in my opinion. The uh, kind of Kevlar bulletproof looking thing. Uh, I love the spandex. Uh, for the comic but to jump off the comic and onto the live-action screen uh, this is the way to go and a comparison with a couple of the other Marvel select uh, movie figures live-action characters here he is with Captain America and he is just a little bit shorter than Cap which he should be and here he is with Tony Stark Iron Man Again, a little bit shorter. And here is Thor. He is uh, quite a bit shorter than Thor, as he should be. And then, final comparison, the last Avenger I have was the Incredible Hulk. And just like everybody else, he is dwarfed by the Incredible Hulk. So that's a really nice looking set. I think they look great together and I would really love it. I don't know how the right stuff works with the Netflix characters if crossover isn't allowed, but I would absolutely love it if the Netflix Daredevil got to be a part of this group here, the uh, live action Avengers, because I think the Daredevil show is the real gem of the Marvel Netflix universe. I think it's a crying shame that quite a few people still don't want to give this show a chance because the Ben Affleck Daredevil um, didn't really do it for them. And they think, well, how good could it be? Because that Ben Affleck movie was not any good. So, uh, you know, if you haven't checked out Daredevil on Netflix yet, if you can handle the, uh, the violence in it, it is not a kid's show. That's a, that's a big warning. Daredevil on Netflix is a hard R, but it's still a great show. Um, and it reminds me of the R-rated stuff of the 80s, that it might ha have violence in it, but it's got such a great story. It's about this guy's heart right here, his indomitable human spirit. So uh, I would highly recommend Daredevil, not so much any of the other, uh, Marvel Netflix shows, but Daredevil seasons one, two, and three. I'm a couple episodes into season three and really loving what I'm seeing there too. So, uh, really love this character, love this incarnation of him. Uh, I've always loved the character of Daredevil in the comics, and I'm just really happy that he's finally uh, being done right in at least the Netflix universe. So that is my Marvel Select Daredevil review. He is, as I said, available on Big Bad Toy Store right now. He's on sale. So if you're as big a fan of the Guardian Devil as I am, uh, check him out. He's, I think, definitely worth the money. Leave a comment below if you have a thought or opinion on this figure or on the uh, Daredevil Netflix series. Share if you like the video, and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Nerd Mistake.